what's up guys um, I want to bring you guys a project that I've been working on um, for a couple couple days now actually the whole project overall has been happening for a couple weeks um, trying to decide how I was going to exactly do this but uh, it started off simple enough we just wanted to put an inverter uh, in the fifth wheel so that we could have a way to plug in some stuff if we decide to you know boondock for a night or pull over somewhere for a night and sleep and still have a way to plug some stuff in so we're not trying to be off grid um, we're not trying to boondock for days and days at a time or weeks at a time um, all we're trying to do really is just have enough power to um, maybe do a day or maybe two um, so this is kind of what I come up with um, like all projects it start off just being super simple and then uh, the more I started researching it one thing kind of led to another to another and it turned into a little more of a project than what I thought it was going to be but uh, that's kind of typical of any project I guess so I'll show you guys what we did all right so originally the project started off with just wanting to upgrade um, this was the standard battery box there was a group 24 uh, we had a group 24 AGM in there uh, for a 12 volt battery just a single 12 volt battery um, and then uh, my brother who owns a golf cart company uh, had a couple AGM uh, 220 amp hour 6 volts that he purchased for a customer that kept them, didn't like them, decided he wanted something different. So um, he cut me a sweet deal, like free, on these. So uh, yeah, Performance Plus cars. Got to give him, uh, got to give him a shout out on that one because uh, he hooked us up with a, a couple of really really nice AGM 6 volts. Uh, he kept some for his Class A, and uh, he had two left. So. Uh, he let me have those to put in to put in ours. So that was all I was going to do. Basically, just upgrade the batteries, um, and from there, once I had a couple of 220 hour batteries, I decided, you know, that now we had enough capacity to where we could run a little inverter if we wanted to. So pretty much, uh, here's what I did to put the batteries in. Just made a nice little aluminum tray for the battery boxes to sit in. Um, that's a two watt jumper to jump them together. So. Um, just real quick I go over this uh, some of you guys may know may not know but uh, we'll cover it so I've got two six volt batteries I hooked them together in series so when you hook batteries in series you double the voltage but the capacity of the battery in this example 220 amp hours stays the same so essentially what I have now is one uh, big 220 amp hour battery if you parallel then the voltage stays the same and the capacity doubles so just for your reference um, so I used two on jumper hooked them together um, then started doing a little research about inverters um, obviously there's pure sine wave inverters there's modified sine wave inverters um, for our needs I just decided to go with a, a relatively inexpensive um, modified sine wave uh, we're not trying to run a lot of electronics on it for extended periods of time it's really just, like I said, um, a day or two, or maybe an overnight pulling over boondocking, something like that, uh, stopping on the way. So this one we picked up on Amazon. Um, it had really, really good reviews. It's 2,000 watts. It came with the cables. It came with uh, the fuse block. So it came with everything you really need to, to install the inverter. Um, really good deal. We'll have a link down in the description to this, uh, to this inverter. Um, and then from there, I did a little more research and found out that uh, there is a, a pretty inexpensive battery monitor you can get. So it's a shunt based monitor, so it will give you amperage pulling out of the batteries. It will give you the amperage going into the batteries when they're charging. Uh, the voltage, you can set your battery capacity, so it will give you a, a percentage of battery life left. I'll show you that in a minute uh, inside. But uh, essentially the way this shunt works, you have your main negative from your battery to one side of the shunt, and then all your loads, in our example, the, uh, the load going to the trailer, so the load going to the fifth wheel uh, comes off of this side, and then also the inverter load here is going to come off. Once we got those installed, uh, I realized that the factory converter on this fifth wheel wasn't really keeping the batteries as charged as I would like. Um, it does okay at maintaining, but the issue we were having is after we operate the slides or some heavy 12 volt loads, um, the batteries just were taking a really, really long time to recover. 
and I wasn't real happy with that. Um, never saw the batteries really get up over 12.8 uh, even when the converter was on and charging them. So uh, the wiring on, on most of these fifth wheels is, is undersized to carry too much amperage uh, all the way from where the converter is located all the way up here to the front to the batteries. So that's where this comes in. Uh, I mounted a Victron Blue Smart uh, 12 volt 10 amp charger. It's just a single leg charger. Uh, mounted it up in here, ran it. Again, the negative side of the charger, uh, the negative charging lead is gonna go to the shunt so that I can monitor the amperage that the charger is putting out uh, from inside on the monitor. And then the positive just goes here on your positive lead. So another cool thing about the Victron uh, Blue Smart chargers, uh, you can actually monitor your charger on the uh, Victron Connect app. So you just open the app up, it'll, it's going to connect uh, to your charger, and it's going to show you what stage the charger's in. It's going to show you uh, the voltage of the batteries, and then it's going to show you the current the charger's putting out. So uh, this is, it's really cool to be able to just open this thing up, you know, from anywhere in or around your RV, and you're going to know what stage the charger's in. Um, it goes from bulk to absorption, which ours is in now, then it goes to float, and then once it's in float for a certain period of time, it's going to go to the storage mode that keeps the batteries just uh, just topped off. So, uh, just a real cool feature that uh, Victron has, um, and the fact that those chargers come with a five-year warranty uh, is pretty impressive. Ran everything uh, through the wall here, came through into the basement, and just kind of ran all my leads uh, up along kind of where all the plumbing goes and up to the front. So now we'll go inside and uh, show you guys what we did in there. All right, so now we're inside and uh, this is kind of what I had in mind when I wanted to do the inverter setup. So here's the remote switch that operates the inverter. We can turn it on and off from here. Um, this is our battery monitor. You can see right now I've got the Victron charger uh, running. It's putting out 14.2 volts. Um, we just got done running some 12 volt stuff uh, before I got the power plugged in just to kind of test everything out. We ran the inverter a little bit, but uh, here's your percentage. So when this thing gets all the way to 100%, uh, the charger is going to go into float mode and the charger also goes into storage mode, which is even a little less than float mode. Just keeps a small, small charge um, going to the batteries just to kind of help keep them maintained and, and fully charged. Um, it's been working out great so far. I'm really, really happy with the way that charger's performing. So it gives us uh, our amp hour capacity. So we're at 218.6 amp hours. So when it's all 100%, that'll read 220 amp hours. Um, just, it's really nice to be able to monitor all this stuff from inside, uh, from inside the trailer. So the next thing I did, um, I installed, this is the plug socket that I installed that runs, that goes to the inverter. So it's got USBs, um, four plugs. If you're gonna do this, I would recommend maybe getting the one that only has two or three plugs, um, just because it'll be it'll give you more options on where you can install it. Um, I kind of wanted all this stuff over here, but I got on the back side of the back side back here. Once we we got a lot going on over here, so I had to move it over. Not a big deal, um, you know. The table kind of sits there in front of that, so it's it's really not a problem. Kind of keeps it hid you know when we're not using it so you can see I can turn the inverter on from inside now the inverter's on and you can see our light there lights up letting us know that that plug is now live it's super convenient to have not only for boondocking or just pulling over you know if you're just gonna pull over for the night you know you, you may not need any uh, 120 volt power but if you do it's nice to be able to just turn that inverter on and uh, and be able to have a place to plug something in if, if need be um, you know, if the power goes out the, at the campground or, I mean, you know, any number of reasons um, that you lose power, it's nice to have that just kind of as a, as a backup. I also did get a heavy duty um, 20 amp extension cord. So the reason I did that uh, is so that if we're gonna be somewhere for a couple of days, I have the ability to plug that cord in to the inverter and then I can take it all the way to the back of the fifth wheel um, and I bought a, uh, a 50 amp to 15 amp adapter so that I could plug that cord in and then we could actually power the fifth wheel um, 
We're not going to be able to run the AC. We're not going to be able to run a lot of any, anything really heavy loads. But for convenience sake, to be able to um, plug in, you know, to any outlet that we want to plug into. If we're going to be somewhere for a few days, that's a nice option to have also. Uh, the one thing that you will have to do if you decide to do go that route, um, you'll have to come in here. And if you're going to plug your fifth wheel into the, directly into the inverter, then you're going to need to come in here. You're going to need to find your uh, converter breaker and turn that converter off. Because what will happen if you don't do that, that converter is going to be trying to charge the batteries while you're pulling from the batteries. So you kind of create this, uh, this, this death spiral effect of you're pulling pulling amperage out of the batteries, the converter is trying to put it in the batteries, but the converter is pulling from the inverter. It's just kind of this cycle that will drain your batteries very, very quickly. So make sure if you're going to do that, cut the converter off, um, maybe shut off some AC breakers, shut off any of the high load stuff that you don't want to accidentally turn on um, while, you're, while you're plugged into the inverter. Alright, so the last thing, uh, kind of the last part was being able to charge the batteries um, while we're not plugged in and that means having some solar panels. Um, I didn't want to really mount any panels on the roof. Um, again, that's all you know, added expense. Um, I really was trying to keep this simple and not break the budget. Um, I think we've done a good job at keeping, keeping the cost pretty, pretty low. But an important thing uh, that you really do need to have is going to be a good set of solar panels. So we got these off uh, as well off of Amazon, the Renji. A portable solar panel that's a 200 watt panel folds up uh, it's got nice kickstand legs and easy to store comes in a case fits perfect right in the basement um, this case is a very very sturdy case so we can still put light stuff on top of it without damaging the panel we can put our chairs and things on top of it hopefully you guys found this uh, information useful if you have any questions something i didn't cover about installing the inverter or solar panels definitely uh, definitely drop uh, drop a question down in the comments i'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have um, again you know you can make this as expensive as you want uh, there's a ton of different inverters out there different styles different watt ratings but, you know, our biggest thing was trying to keep it inexpensive, uh, which is relative because it still was expensive to do this. But uh, in the grand scheme of things, um, with the additional flexibility it's going to give us, I think it's well worth it. Dylan, you ready to do some boondocking? Yeah. Definitely. It's it. yeah, but it, without the solar panels and stuff, we wouldn't be able to boondock. And there's lots of cool places. Is that you can only be without hookups up to so that's why we have solar, solar panels and then the converter and inverter and everything. Make sure to subscribe, like, and ring the bell. Alright guys. Catch you guys down the road.